Hello folks, as you can hopefully see behind me there, um, summer appears to have arrived here in the southeast of England. Uh, it's early May and we've got about a week forecast where the weather's going to be really nice with temperatures of around 20 odd degrees going up to 24 degrees by the weekend. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's lovely at the moment. And the good news is that there's no moon about at the minute. So even though I've got to be at work tomorrow, I'm going to try and nip out tonight and uh, get my telescope out because uh, by the end of this month, there'll basically be no, no darkness left properly, which um, somewhat hampers you trying to do astrophotography. So um, yes, I'll be uh, going out tonight, uh, should stay clear. So hopefully you'll join me. My name's John and I make videos on camping, walking and astronomy. If you like what you see in this video then please check my channel out as you may find others that interest you there. But in the meantime let's crack on with this video. My likely target tonight is going to be the galaxy pairing Messier 81 and 82 um, which sit in the constellation of the Plough. <clears throat> For me, uh, here in the Northern Hemisphere, they're, um, I think, circumpolar, which means that they're visible the entire year round, so they're, they're good sort of targets to, to have. Um, but in the springtime, they're kind of super high up in the sky, virtually kind of right above you, which uh, gets them away from the um, kind of dome of light pollution that, that sits over my area. So uh, this is a kind of ideal time to, to image these two targets. Um, they're close together, so they're going to be in the same photograph. Uh, the, they're quite bright as well, so uh, they're fairly good. Well, they're very good targets, in fact, for astrophotographers of all levels, from beginners to advanced. Um, beginners are almost guaranteed to get something out of it because the, the targets are so bright. Um, if you're very advanced or you're prepared to put in a lot of hours of, uh, of imaging, then uh, it's possible to get lots of very, very faint sort of gassy structures. I think it's called um, intergalactic flux or something, uh, which I've got absolutely no chance of getting. Um, I shall probably only get an hour or an hour and a half's worth of exposures because um, I'll have to be in bed by midnight <laughs> to get to work tomorrow. But this is where these two targets are, are pretty good ones. E even though I might only get an hour or so's exposure time on them, I shall uh, hopefully get something out of them. So um, yes, let's um, wait for evening to come and get cracking. Don't want to sleep tonight at all Just want to watch them stars fall But you don't want to try to make up dreams Just to be seen I want to lay here beside you Oh quiet Fire breath and open sky It's not what we know It's where we go I grow wings and tell her goodbye oh, It's not what we see It's what we choose to and beer feet. Oh, Jewish second is a tree. Well, there's um, good news and there's bad news. The uh, good news is that I got an hour and a bit, about an hour and two minutes of one minute exposures on the um, Messier 81 and 82 galaxy pairing and got a result that I'm kind of reasonably happy with considering it's only an hour's worth of, of exposure. The bad news is that I got to bed at about half past 12, was up the next morning at 
um, half six to go to work, had um, a full day at work, um, got home about quarter past six, half past six, something like that, and I was quite tired. So the net result of that is I went to bed early at about um, half nine, quarter to ten, to wake up the next day to find my Facebook feed absolutely flooded with Aurora pictures. And I live uh, 51 degrees north, basically, so the Aurora kind of never comes down to um, my part of the world. Uh, but there was a kind of once in 20 year massive solar event on that night that obviously I wasn't aware of in advance and I completely missed it. <laughs> I can't believe it. There was photographs from people in their back gardens in my town that were astounding. Um, yeah. So I was quite gutted. So um, I think, yeah, this once in 20 or 30 year event, I've basically missed. <laughs> and uh, I'm not 100% convinced I'm going to be around for, for another one when it comes around again. So uh, yeah, that was the bad news anyway. Um, on the plus side, it was a really nice weekend weather-wise and I had a nice ride on my bike and that kind of thing. Um, so I can't really complain. But um, yeah... My back to my photograph, I processed it and um, I'm quite pleased with the result at the end of the day. Um, Messier's 81 and 82 are um, a super popular target for astrophotographers and visual observers. They're, it's fairly easy to find, so even if you haven't got a, a go to mount you can probably still track it down and, and look at it visually. And I think you can even spot them in, in binoculars. The two galaxies are quite close together. They're about 150,000 light years, I think, between each other, um, which is fairly close in, in astro terms. And both of them sit, uh, give or take, uh, 12 million light years away. Um, M81, the spirally type galaxy, um, is known as uh, often known as Bode's Nebula, uh, but it's obviously a galaxy. It's probably because when it was um, originally spotted, uh, they didn't know about galaxies outside of our own Milky Way galaxy, so everything got, got classified as a nebula. M82 is a or is known as the cigar galaxy, presumably because it looks a bit like a, a cigar. And it's actually quite bright. And if you're looking at things uh, visually, I think that's the one that you, you tend to see first. The characteristic of M82 is it's got a huge, like absolutely huge amount of star formation going on inside its centre. And I think there's something like a hundred times greater star formation than we have in our, our own Milky Way galaxy. And the net result of this is there's, I think it's like a solar wind uh, cre that's created by these uh, star formation. And this is so strong that it, it's blowing out tendrils of uh, hydrogen gas, like knotty strands. And so the galaxy in very long exposure photographs has got like red strands coming out of the center of it. And the last time I imaged these galaxies was years ago and I've never managed to, to get any of that. But uh, this time round, I was pleased to see that I could see evidence of the uh, red tendrils of, of hydrogen gas caused by this star formation actually in the in the image so I'm quite pleased about that so I'm gonna um, pop the image that I took up in a tick um, it's I'll show initially the wide field image which is kind of how it comes off my camera um, a small uh, refractor and a DSLR camera gives you a, a, a very wide field of view um, meaning the galaxies are quite small, but not as tiny as some of those that I've um, looked at previously. I then uh, cropped and tweaked that image a little bit and 
that's the, the second image that I show, which gives the more kind of classic view of the M81, M82 pairing. And finally, I honed in on the um, M82 Galaxy, the one with the, with the star formation, um, just to show you, you can see the, the, the red tendrils of hydrogen gas coming out the center uh, on, on that particular image. So yeah, I'm going to put those up now. Um, I'm looking forward this weekend to getting out on a, a wild camp. I've got a, a new new location that I spotted trailing through Google Earth the, the other week. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, video for that will be out in a couple of weeks or so, I think. Um, but yeah, on, on that note, I see the sun's trying to get out now. I shall... Um, Bid you cheerio and I hope you like my picture. Take care. See you. <laughs>